So Nintendo had a two-part showcase, starting with the Indie World Showcase and then going right into the Nintendo Partner Direct. And they both had some interesting stuff, but we're not gonna run through the whole things here. We're just gonna run through the ones that I personally feel like were kind of the standout moments for this show. Hey everybody, Bobby here with Direct Gaming, and today we're gonna be talking about the Nintendo Indie World Showcase and Nintendo Partner Direct Showcase that were presented August 27, 2024. And uh, if you enjoy this video and like what we discuss here, make sure you subscribe and leave a like. That's a great way to support us for free and it helps us out in the algorithm. We do appreciate it. And we've been having a great month so far. So we're hoping you'll join us for more content in the future. Let's get right into this. For me, Bellatro, that is one that I have heard a ton of people talk about. I've heard it is like, should be in consideration for Game of the Year. I have not played it myself, but they put out a big update with all sorts of branded cards from The Witcher and Among Us and Vampire Survivors. And this is, I think, really cool. This game is obviously blowing up if it's getting all these big brands to sign on to put on their IP on the cards in the game. That's basically like advertisement for those brands. And I think that's very cool. Uh, next up was Neva, and that one was really great looking. I want to play this because Gris was a fantastic game that came out, oh, some years back but that was a fantastic indie and this one is looking beautiful with the art style reminded me a lot of uh, limbo inside that kind of thing play dead their uh, their games uh, after that we saw a really cool thing for sea of stars it's getting a dlc called throws of the watchmaker and sea of stars is a really fantastic game and if you haven't played it and you like old school rpgs like chrono trigger that's i mean that's obviously the first thing that comes to mind when you play that game uh you're going to want to check out Sea of Stars, and this DLC is looking fantastic as well. I do not doubt that that team is going to be able to put together some more fantastic content very easily because they did a great job with Sea of Stars. And then right up next was the Ogre Fans Delight with Power Wash Simulator's Shrex uh, pack. I thought that was very, very funny. It's got the, the whole fantasy thing. You can wash off Shrek's outhouse and things like that. Up next was Morsels. That one looked really, really interesting. It has a really cool art style. Uh, I don't know what the whole thing was. They said it was like you're in a world of mice fighting tyrannical evil cats, but I didn't get that from the actual gameplay. It just kind of looked like craziness to me. And then another one that was very cool looking was Peglin. And that one is a kind of like pachinko, eliminate the pegs as the ball moves down kind of thing. There's obviously more mechanics to it than that, but that's kind of the basis of everything. And this one is coming out today. So if you're interested in that, you can look for that on the eShop. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember if they said or not it was free, but either way, if that looks like it's up your alley, that could be something that you check out. And we also had Metal Slug Tactics. This is an old school one. Uh, if you're a, a boomer, a gaming boomer like me, you probably remember Metal Slug from being a kid. Uh, if you're younger, Metal Slug is a really cool kind of like shoot 'em up, fast paced, crazy, fun time. I like Contra, you know. And then my most anticipated game of basically anything this year coming up, aside from maybe Zelda, is the Plucky Squire. I've been waiting for this one for about three years now and it's finally coming out. Uh, if you are a PlayStation owner and you have PlayStation Plus Extra, it will be free with your subscription on there. Uh, if you are a Switch owner though, you're gonna have to buy it. They are doing physical releases. I've seen those go up, the pre-orders go up for Best Buy, so you can pre-order those now. And then they're gonna have it on the eShop as well. And then Pizza Tower, that's another one I have not played, but that looks like a really fun time. I hadn't really seen any gameplay until this, and I thought, man, this looks like a lot of fun. It's got a lot of that Sonic DNA, just that let's keep moving, let's just run through really big, massive levels and keep the action going. And that might have to go into my backlog because much like you all, I'm sure my backlog is ever growing and there are just so many great games coming out that I want to play and check out and dedicate at least a couple hours to to see how I like them. But yeah, there was some uh, new content coming out here for Pizza Tower and it really did inspire me to want to check out this game that I have heard and that is available today. So make sure that if you're watching this, you go check that out, uh, see if you can snag it from the eShop for your Switch. Now, right after that, we did have a Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase, Partner Direct, whatever you want to call it. But before we get to that, I do want to cut to Talon and let him tell you about this month's sponsor to the channel. Are you someone who loves the game but just can't find the time? Want to finally jump into the brand new game Black Myth Wukong or maybe just a quick online match with The Boys? But that crazy schedule of yours just won't allow it. Whether it be school, full-time job, family, or anything else you can think of, throw on top of that having to make dinner and clean up after, which let's be honest, nobody likes to do. Well, today is your lucky day. 
Factor is the best place to get chef prepared meals on the table in two minutes that are not only ready to go, but extremely healthy and tasty. I mean, just look at all these options right here. My personal top three picks would have to be the roasted garlic chicken, honey mustard pork chops, and mm, oh, that creamy Parmesan chicken. Yeah, I'm definitely eyeing that one right there. Or maybe you just need something for breakfast. The smoky bacon and cheddar egg bites definitely make my mouth water a little bit. It gives you the protein you need for the day and can also get in some much needed gaming sessions. All you have to do in order to get all of this is just click the link in the pinned comment to get 50%. Yes, you heard me, 50%. That is half off the normal price of your first factor box. And you will also get 20% off your next month's order. Also, to top it all off, you don't need to order something for every day. Only need meals for two days out of the week? No problem. One thing I especially love about Factor is that you can actually skip weeks, which means that you are not charged and you can start back up whenever you want. That saves you money when you need it and you can still get in those sweet gaming sessions. So, what the heck are you waiting for? Hit the link, sign up, and use the code that you see on screen to get 50% off now. All right, thanks for that, Talon. So let's talk about this partner showcase because this had some interesting stuff in it too. We had Tetris Forever. If you are like me and so many other gaming boomers, Tetris might have been one of the first games you ever played. Well, we are seeing Tetris Forever. It is kind of a rehash of the old school like Nintendo or Famicom Tetris, letting you play multiplayer, things like that. We had Star Overdrive, which looked really, really cool. I absolutely love the look of this one. It looks like a you know, like an action RPG kind of thing where you're running around on these big desert planets fighting bugs and all this stuff. And then we saw Goat Simulator 3. If you know anything about Goat Simulator, that is one of the silliest games that has ever been made. It is always a good time. It's just a physics sandbox. You get to mess around, be it a goat or a pig or what have you, and just doing dumb things. Watching your body go full ragdoll is always really hilarious. And right after that was The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky the First. This is a remake, and I have never played this franchise, but I heard a lot of people speak very highly of it, so this might be something where I check it out just to get introduced to the franchise and then work my way through down the line. Then one of the biggest things that uh, was probably a thing for a lot of the Switch audience here was the SpongeBob SquarePants Patrick Star game, which is looking kind of like Goat Simulator, but for Patrick Star, it looks like there's a lot of fun, silly, goofy action you can take. It's very sandbox driven, you can tell. I mean, you see Patrick rolling along the ground, jumping off of stuff, falling, getting knocked over, doing like stuff on a jungle gym. And I think a lot of SpongeBob fans are gonna have a great time with this. This one's definitely gonna be one for the younger audience to just lose their minds over. I'm not saying you have to be a kid to like it, but uh, I definitely feel like kids are gonna absolutely lose it over that one. Let me see Capcom Fighting Collection 2. This is another one of those collections that they're coming out with. And this one is different than the Marvel versus Capcom like arcade collection they announced a couple months ago. So Capcom is really going through and putting work into getting these old games onto the Switch, basically as the Switch is entering its, uh, its end of life kind of cycle here. Right after that, we had the announcement of a new Atelier game. And this is another franchise I have not played, but I have heard nothing but fantastic things about. Uh, maybe for this one, I'll go back and play through some of the older ones before this one, because this one is a brand new entry. And so I feel like that would make sense. And then we see the Suikoden 1 and 2 HD remaster, Gate, Rune, and Dunan Unification Wars. Uh, I've never played Suikoden as well, and I am a sucker for this HD 2D thing. I absolutely love that art style. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, this might be another one I pick up. I'm absolutely picking up one of the next games in this showcase that we're gonna talk about in a second here, but I just absolutely love the pixel art on top of like really kind of, yeah, they're pixel art, but they're getting into like really detailed backgrounds. I just think that's a, such a beautiful look. And I am just always gonna be interested in the games that have this art style. Plus, Suikoden is one of those franchises that has been around forever. So this might be something worth checking out for you as well. And then we had Dragon Quest 3 HD Remake, another HD 2D game. Very small segment on this, obviously, because we've seen a lot of it already. This one is looking phenomenal. And uh, I just love the art style in this one. Obviously, it's the Akira Toriyama character design and things like that uh, that are really helping, you know, as someone who was a Dragon Ball fan growing up. 
like and just a sucker for this this look this hd 2d look as well as toriyama's art style this is one that is absolutely going to be picked up and played by me probably day one if i can manage it in terms of time uh, then we had a Castlevania, looks fantastic, the Castlevania Dominus collection. And then Tales of Grace F Remastered, that's another JRPG that is looking very nice. And it looks almost like the new Pokemon games, it's very, very high detail in the characters. And then the background, the world, because it's a fully 3D rendered world, kind of looks like it took a back seat and i'm actually okay with that i didn't mind that in like pokemon scarlet and violet so much you know hopefully they can get their performance much better than those games but i do absolutely think this is going to be one worth checking out as well we had some glimpses of some five nights at freddy's games we had some really quick glimpses of things like epic mickey and tales of the shire a lord of the rings game uh, lego horizon adventures which is coming out really weird that sony is putting that on the switch but who knows how that ended up working out Cool for them, I suppose. Then we see Rune Factory, Guardians of Azuma. This is looking absolutely beautiful, and I think this is going to be one worth checking out. And we ended with Yakuza Kiwami. This is, I believe, a remake of the original Yakuza. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. I have not played Yakuza slash Like a Dragon either. Uh, at least, I think maybe I played the second one or something a long, long time ago. Uh, but there's one of those about every year, and I hear they are generally well received. I know the one from this year was actually received extraordinarily well and is probably going to be in the running for Game of the Year. But this is it for the Nintendo Direct and Indie Showcase. Uh, what was your favorite thing? Did I miss one of the games that you're really excited about? I'm sorry if I did, but uh, let us know down in the comments below what you thought of the showcase. I personally thought this was like a i would say a b plus personally and i know people won't be willing to give any showcase that doesn't have like kirby mario zelda and metroid like back to back to back they're not willing to give that higher than a c but for a showcase involving a bunch of indies i really thought this had a lot of great content and a lot of stuff for the last you know we know this is the last year of switch nintendo is just outright saying we have a switch successor we're not ready to talk about it yet but it is coming you know just to let everybody know because obviously switch sales have cooled off quite a bit this year uh but this is a banger of a last year i mean the switch has had nothing but great years in my opinion every year has had some great games for the switch has not been like you know sony last year had basically like spider-man and some dlc like for god of war and, and horizon and xbox really didn't have anything at all in 2022 uh barely had anything in 2023 except for starfield and redfall i think uh so yeah there's just like a lot of disappointment in the the higher end gaming consoles but switch just like always has years where there's great stuff and it, even if it's mostly third party there's still some fantastic first party stuff that comes out too and i think we should be really happy with the output they have but let us know in the comments what your favorite thing for this video was and thank you again to our sponsors over at factor for helping support the channel in this video and make sure to click the link down in the pinned comment to get your hands on those delicious meals at those delicious discounts thank you so much for watching this has been little bobby for direct gaming and if you've made it this far please subscribe hit that like button and let us know what you think down in the comments we hope to see you soon